Okay, how's it going everybody? I'm just here at my place on the Magdanawan River. I have an epic trip coming up to the Yukon. By the time you see this video, I might already be on my way. I'm hoping to have a multi-part series done and I'm doing a solo trip down an extremely remote and challenging river called the Heart River. It's very beautiful. This is gonna be a 14 day long trip and it's a long time to be out there solo. In the meantime, time I'd like to show you some pretty exciting Yukon based footage to get you hyped up for this next trip I'm going to show you a few highlights from my initial Yukon adventure a solo trip down the Hess River My flight is going to take me deep into the wilderness and drop me off at a place called Keel Lake and then I'm going to be on the Hess River for over a week I'm going to hit the Stewart which is going to be a little more tame than the Hess I'm going to paddle all the way back here and drive back to Whitehorse so that's the logistics of the trip Tailwind to start the trip. See you later! Got some rain! A little bit of rainy pants. Just like that, it's beautiful again. Rainbow. Well, the bugs have found me, and uh, this first drop on Keel Creek is really steep and really raging. It's like kind of runnable, and then there's just a boulder strewn steep chute at the bottom that there's just no way you're gonna avoid the rocks, and I have no idea what's downriver and the current's ripping. And uh, there's a trail here which tells me most people carry these low-lying uh, bushes can conceal a grizzly bear pretty well. Which way does the trail go? Here, yeah, wolfy, wolfy, wolfy. Looks like the water came up last night. We had a heavy rain last night. This bend in the river and put in there, that would probably be the safest. And down river's a blind corner. No idea what's down there. Probably drops again. Even the wolf shit itself when it saw how dangerous the put in was. That is the next 
blind corner. And it's looking like at this point I need to just pick up all my stuff and bushwhack Portage to the river, which is definitely going to take all day and then some. I will have walked 10 kilometers. I see the Hess! Yeah, baby! It does end! There she is! Camp on the Hess! Woo! That is what I just ran. Beautiful evening. Oh, hello, up close and personal. Yeah! Towards the frying pan, good sir. So cool, it looks like an old wilderness cabin. This is what the Yukon is all about, man. Looks like they just left the door wide open. Come on in, bears. Come in and notice there's nothing here. Baby, look at that.
trying to reach and grab it and it's spinning around and I'm running back and forth along the eddy trying to grab the boat when it gets close. Well, I see my spare paddle that's lashed to the top of the boat come loose and float away. So now I have my other paddle in my hand. I'm like, this is my only paddle. I'm gonna have to whittle a paddle. And so I'm chasing it back and forth and I'm just exhausted. Then all of a sudden it kicks out of the eddy. Well, I climb up the mountain and down and I'm totally gassed, I slide down a hill. By the way, I've already lost my GoPro that was on my head, gone. All the footage on it, gone. Probably about a $600 camera, gone, sunk into the bottom of the Hess River. Holy shit! Look what it is. Speak of the devil. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, it's like a boomerang smashed canoe at the side of the river always a good thing to uh, remind you to be safe when you're out here in the wilderness. A mother bear and two cubs but the wind keep blowing me backwards. All three of them were standing up looking at me it was so cool but I couldn't get it on camera because of a headwind which is probably half the reason I saw them because um, they couldn't smell me. My 1 to 50 topographic maps, remaining few kilometers of the trip are pretty much hooped. Oh. Boom, look at that. Aha, uh -huh, there's the trail. Well, I see the Portage Trail in quite an obvious spot. So Fraser Falls, here we are. Time for a long portage. Uh, I'm not looking forward to doing it, but looking forward to getting it done. Hey there! I don't know what year a Jeep that is. That is a gigantic grizzly bear poop. It looks like burial ground. Some people were laid to rest here. Neat thing to go and uh, pay your respects at. Then of course, last year, my solo trip down the remote Bonnet Plume River in high water, which was just amazing. Dinner. I'm gonna call you dinner. We are just coming up on our first rapid of the adventure. Woo! See some squirrely looking stuff up there. I'm terrified. You got this, Jim. You got this. Kind of a blind corner here. I'm gonna keep my stern into shore, but it's rocky on the right. Holy
was awesome. Every shot in the just time to get a uh, fire going and uh, find a little baby duckling and just punch it in the face. Just kidding. Wow, I'm already starting to lose it. It's only day two. Good morning. Day three. Just woke up. I'm still tired. I heard uh, an animal out here. At like 3.30 this morning, I heard a... Uh, a noise, an animal walking out here. I think it was a moose, but it seemed to be like not far from my tent. Oh no, no pressure. Oh, son of a Tight maneuvering here. Hey, bear! Add in some cranberries. Basically all the things, stuffing, mashed potatoes, turkey, and cranberries, all dehydrated and mixed together. I think there's supposed to be like two or three meals in that dehydrated pouch. Because my pot is full. Thank you, honey. bone just jammed between the rocks here I found as I'm scouting. Maybe something came to the river. Maybe that's a bad omen. Okay so here's my line. I'm gonna come down here like this. I don't know maybe I could hit it here. Maybe that's like a pillow but there's a lot of boils there. I might just carry my stuff to here and put it in here. Well, if you remember, I said that uh, I saw a bone while scouting the rapid stuck between two rocks. Well, I just pulled over on a gravel bar because look what I found. Cool. Okay, so we got another class three. I can't really see around the corner either. So maybe I can wade through the water and get a look. But the thing is it rages around the corner, which means unfortunately 
I'm going to have to walk way down there and scout that blind corner because the map shows back-to-back -back rapids. But you see how the river disappears. That's pretty dangerous. You don't want to just head off into this without knowing what's around the corner. Oh, sh**. Well, unfortunately, it looks like a portage. Well, pretty much almost there. Last 50 meters, no brakes. Not bad for a double packing. Cool. There's that uh, point there. I don't know what's around the bend. Here's the part that I couldn't see. Some boils and whirlpools. They can be tricky. Holy f Another intense rapid down there. Ugh, this day is uh, turning out to be pretty interesting and hair raising, but anyways, take it a step at a time. Think I'm gonna go back, jump in my canoe, and run this rapid as carefully as possible. Class four, right at the base of this beautiful runnable rapid. How depressing. Well, I came to have a look at it. It doesn't look so bad, but I'd have to run perfectly along that line. If I got into this here or that there, look at the boiling eddy here. That would be all kinds of trouble. Crazy boils here. You're getting kind of sick of just being scared shitless all the time. are marked on the Canadian topographic maps. Looks like just a ledge I'll be able to run. And right at the end to cap it all off, I see a smashed in half canoe. Didn't work out too well for some reason. Basically, I've made it nowhere today. I was hoping to like bang off 40 clicks today. I think I've made like 10 clicks. But anyways, this is a sick campsite. I noticed a little fire ring up there. Nice little place to put a tent too. So pretty stoked on this campsite. Just using my uh, Cold Steel Outdoorsman rig a little pot hanging device. Hammockin. We also got bacon and uh, beef jerky as well in there. Ripped up about a half a pack of uh, Ready Crisp bacon. I think I made too much. Well, that is a rubber room. Just to give you an idea of how cold it gets at night, thick layer of frost on uh, my gun case and camera case this morning. Jeez, I want a coffee so bad I could shotgun one. First task of the day, run this rapid.
beautiful. This keeps going too. Another tributary looks like a honey hole here. Almost missed it too because it's just it's hard to distinguish it between just another braid entering back into the main channel. I want to take a couple of gas depots. Another tank grayling. This little honey hole. Look at how beautiful. Wow. wilderness mountains all around perfect evening clean pure unaltered river in a state of true wilderness i believe i am at the marked rapid it goes around a blind corner and i was cruising along and i like saw it and panicked and like paddle over to shore as quickly as possible and just sort of beach myself because there's no eddy I'm gonna go scout it out though. Hopefully it's runnable. Looks like people do camp here though. And there's a portage trail too, leading right up this way. Usually when there's a portage trail, that means that it's a pretty serious rapido. But I'm gonna go scout it out. It looks like it might be a class four. So if you went into this hole here, you could get really, really hurt. And this here is a hole if you went into that, you just get trapped in swamp and you wouldn't be able to swim out. It's a keeper. Looks like I'm starting the day out with a big portage tomorrow. That's uh, completely unrunnable. The river pinches through a gap that's four meters thick and there's a small waterfall and it's just like a raging frothing hole that, you know, would only be runnable in a large inflatable raft. So. Yeah, so that's like, uh, that's a class five, not uh, not something that I can run. Kind of a bummer. Starting the day off with Portage, not as long as the other ones, probably about 450 meters or so, but it's super rugged. Like I have to go over loose boulders and then tricky maneuvering more or less to scale kind of like to bypass some cliffs and a slip and fall could be severely injury some. I'm just walking along this trail to scout the blind corner. If it's a unrunnable rapid, I wanna make sure that there's a safe back eddy with a place where I can get out and portage around it. I wanna scout it and figure out how to run it or at least, you know, get an idea with what I'll be faced for on whether I should uh, continue portaging or not. Terrible news, guys. I have to portage the whole canyon. This is gonna take me all freaking day I found another bypass route that like cuts off the corner because this canyon's on a bit of a half moon it's a really old trail and it's really hard to follow in some places I think I'm gonna give it a go easily a mile this portage easily a mile long this portage well, I decided I'm just gonna go for it. If I dump, I dump. F it. Yeah, back on the water.
on the uh, ground right beside the creek. But we'll have to make this work. Weather's turning on me and it's after nine. Wow! Just after I got to camp, I just started getting hammered with rain and hail. Crazy looking storm that way. Looks fine pretty much that way. And over here, we have a rainbow. Hey bear! Cutting through a little thicket here. Oh, there's an open channel. Hopefully this brings me out to a good spot. Beautiful in here though, this is awesome. I'm glad I just, just alone for the little trek is worth it. Explore some country off of the river. Wow. Holy I think I see something in here guys. I think I, got, I think I might have got something. Look at that. That's got to be gold. Like, it's got a weight to it. It's heavy. It looks pretty, like, banged up from being in the creek. It's not all smooth. Right at the bottom, I just sift the whole pan through, and I just found a freaking gold nugget. <laughs> yeah! I'm going to give this to my wife, Tori, when I get home. This is, like, the coolest souvenir ever from the Yukon, man. Totally worth putting myself way behind schedule on doing this hike today. And we're off. Right now I see what look like uh, sheep. One, two, three, four. Up on the side of the mountain there. That's a neat, uh thing to see so far away but uh, definitely saw him moving so dull sheep there's like a natural spring that's just bursting out of the side of the mountain it looks like you know obviously at times it's fed with snow runoff too but it just bursts out of the side of the mountain out of nowhere and then tumbles down this long skinny waterfall and then disappears into a pile of rocks it's making me really thirsty just looking at it actually Looks like the uh, roof still doesn't leak too much. Logs are squared on the inside here and you can really see the, the moss and uh, some interesting literature to uh, some thumb through here. Well, that was really cool. Like a little like lookout perch right there. That's what caught my eye. Look at how beautiful this is though. Well, it looks like someone's been here somewhat recently because there's a pump lying right next to the river there. That is a core sampling box. So someone's at least at one time was diamond drilling. Water tower. Looks like this is an outfitter's camp. Just heading into a massively braided section of the bonnet plume. Wow. That one's got some really nice colors.
time to get at it and uh, get food going, get the tent set up, etc., etc. Hundred and twenty kilometers, a little more than that actually, and two days to do it in. Will I make it on time? Still just don't know where, where the heck I am on a map in this winding narrow side channel with ripping current, log jams and sweepers everywhere. Two braids in the river are just colliding and creating a two and a half foot high boil with ripping whirlpools behind it. Probably would have dumped if I went into that. Gotta be on your toes, man. Gotta be on your toes like a ballerina. Dip, 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 dip. Ah. Ah. Almost pushed me into that stick, man. God, how do I keep getting into these horrible channels, man? I just want to get to the peel already. Well, I just finished paddling the Bonnet Plume River and I'm now floating on the peel. I got another 70 kilometers to go to the mouth of the Snake River to await my float plane charter the day after tomorrow. And I am feeling pretty good. The river challenged me. I was on my toes right into the very end. The scenery was just incredible with rugged mountains, incredible campsites. The rapids were scary, very, very pushy, very challenging rapids and swift current around every corner. Portaging was very hard too, but it took me around some beautiful, beautiful canyons with amazing views. I managed to see a good amount of wildlife, three moose, a caribou, several doll sheep, which are pretty rare to see. And I even hiked up a little bit and panned for gold a lot and learned a little bit more about that, which was an amazing experience so I was nervous for sure going into it because I knew it was an advanced level whitewater river and I knew some of the dangers and challenges but now that I'm sitting here finished floating on the peel it just all makes it that much better of a feeling that I've done it and I'm also going to share some of the footage from the trip I did with my family before Hudson was born. Actually, Huddy was just in Tori's tummy at the time. And we went up to the Yukon in the winter and we lived out of an off-grid log cabin. We traveled through the mountains by snowmobile. We went winter camping. We went ice fishing. Then I met up with a buddy in the territory. We snowmobiled deep into the mountains. I did a bison hunt. We did more ice fishing and we actually traveled there in an overlanding style teardrop trailer that we hauled with a forerunner in the winter up the Alaska Highway where we saw tons of bison, moose and all kinds of crazy stuff. Had an amazing adventure. Well, at least the footage will be good. <laughs> And we are starting off in scary conditions. It is like a weather warning right here where me and Tori live. So our next big adventure is just getting underway. Roll, roll on this I right there. Oh my.
road trip night three. This way to Alaska. We did it! <laughs> Check this out. Is it warm? Feels very warm. The hot dogs are a little melty. Is your butt getting cold? Are you in the snow? <laughs> How's that? Great, thank you. Hardy sea scene. That is a lot of sea in that hardy, honey. Oh, honey, I gotta say, nailed it with the fire. Thanks. Oh. Yeah! What a fish. Come for a hot dog. Thank you. <laughs> It's a chilly morning out here in the Yukon, I'll tell ya. Making our way into the headwaters of the Wind River. A lot of people might have heard of the wind um, because it's like a legendary wilderness river to canoe. People come from all over the world to do it. It's remote, it's fly-in. 
It's taken us uh, over 120 kilometers to just get to this point right here. And uh, now we're gonna do kind of a big final push of probably about, uh, you know, 40, 50 K to try to get into the headwaters of the Wind River. We don't even know if we're gonna be able to make it for sure. We talked to a trapper who said that took a dog team in there. So there's a bit of a trail. So we're just gonna enjoy the ride, hopefully get on some fish. <laughs> This is smelling quite good. This is my muff. What's this thing? That's the sausage roll. Oh, hell yeah. <sighs> All right, time to drop a line. Well, between 15 and 20 here. Getting any action over there? Nothing. No bites yet. As soon as I put it down there, yeah, I thought I had a fish instantly. Oh, okay. yeah. Huh. But then it just. Oh, you caught one. Well, it somehow silently caught a fish. <laughs> much more clearly, much more. Uh, what's the word? Low key when he catches a fish than me. I probably would have let it be known and or maybe cheered. So we got one on the board. Nice little, looks like like two, two and a half pound lake or something like that. So let's go check out uh, what, what we got up on the ice here. Beauty Dude. Laker. Is that the prettiest lake that you've ever seen? That's a pretty one. Oh, got one. Yeah. There we go. Great eater sized lake trout. Oh, got another one. That's a nice eater, eh? Whoa. Oh, we got a fish here. Oh. oh! Oh! Oh, right on the way back down. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the biggest one yet. How many is that now? Four? That's four, yeah. Yeah, that's beauty, dude. Turned into an absolutely beautiful day. I mean, look at this spot. Does it get any better than this? I don't think so. Ready to roll? After completing a 400 kilometer long snowmobile expedition into the headwaters of the Wind River, Tori and I took a little bit of time to check out Whitehorse before doing some winter camping as a family. <laughs> Detach the sled, rode out. Now I am retouching the sled. heavy you know maybe if I'd hit it really fast or something you know I think sky high uses this for tourism also for uh, you know trapping as a as a place to stay during trapping season hunting you name it and just to come and camp out and enjoy this beautiful broad sweeping valley we're in I see some super jagged peaks in the background but anyways, now Tori and I have our work cut out for us because we got a lot of snow to remove off the roof of this thing. And uh, we got to get the tent 
over it. We have a big canvas. We have to somehow get over this thing, which is going to be interesting. And um, yeah, I guess that's about it. And then, you know, get a fire going and get settled in. It's turning out to be a pretty exciting and eventful day. Hot chocolate. <clears throat> Got a little toasty in the tent today. It is a balmy minus 10 today, but no wind, light snow, overcast skies. Uh, had a little bit of northern lights last night showing up. Um, but we're still waiting for that big display. Now we're just kind of packing up the last few things so we can load up this sled and try to find uh, a backcountry lake. Okay, well, we're back on the uh, main trail. Now we're gonna have to kind of guess where the trail branches off to Coal Lake. We're on a side hill here and uh, the trail was drifted over. So part of it's hard packed, but right off the trail isn't. And as soon as you get into that soft snow on the side, your machine just wants to roll because the soft snow isn't packed off trail. Um, so anyways, we are going to decide that, uh, yeah, we're turning around, didn't get to fish, but what a cool day, what an adventure, trying to find our way into Cold Lake, going the wrong way, turning back, getting on, thinking, oh man, we're never going to get in, finding this wicked trail with views, and then where we're about five kilometers out, just getting stuffed with this deep snow in this hill that's too big. But now we ride home back uh, to our camp. Good morning, another beautiful day in the Yukon. It is about 10 a.m. and I am at the dog kennel at Sky High Wilderness. I was just talking to Christine, who's hacking up and preparing a bunch of food uh, to feed this uh, kennel of sled dogs. And Tori and I are gonna go for a rip today um, on a dog team and we're super excited about that. my uh, Garmin here, do a little navigate. I think we're gonna try to uh, head into this valley over this way. We're on some tarmac in right now. 
So I think I got one. I'm going to go in there and try to kick them off. Not quite tobogganing, but. Oh, I can't even get down the hill like this. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed watching some of these adventures that I've captured on my previous trips to the Yukon. Amazing, amazing experiences that will always stay with me in these wild Yukon mountains. Next up, you can expect to see some films from the trip I'm doing in the Yukon this year. It's gonna be awesome, stay tuned.